Hello friends. Once again, it's an honor to welcome you back to Rick's Garage. What you see before you today is my Amco brake lathe. These don't get a lot of use these days. Most of your major repair shops don't use them anymore. The reason being is that it takes them about a half an hour to turn a rotor. And why would they want to waste a half an hour trying to save you money? They're in the business to make money. It doesn't make sense for them, especially where a lot of the shops now charge upwards of $120 to $150 an hour. So it's uh, easier for them to replace the rotors. The problem is, in my opinion, the original equipment rotors are far better than the aftermarket rotors you can buy. A lot of them are made overseas in China or in Mexico. Quite honestly, a lot of them are junk. Now, the reason I own one of these is because I got it from a shop that really didn't use it anymore for the reason I just stated. I got it for pennies on the dollar. They practically gave it away. To me, it makes sense to have one because I'm retired now. I'm not under the pressure to make a lot of money. I only work on friends and family's cars these days, and I enjoy saving my friends and relatives money. Now, as I just mentioned, I believe that the original equipment rotors resurfaced are far better than the ones you can buy aftermarket. So I thought it would be fun today to show you how to use a brake lathe. Now, one of the things you should do periodically is to check your machine for runout. It should be within 1,000th total runout. As you can see here, as I rotate the shaft, the dial indicator stays within about a half a thousand. So that's actually pretty damn good. So this machine, even though it's old, is in pretty good shape as far as the uh, shaft runout is concerned. Another thing you should do periodically is check out your spaces. Make sure they have no run out as well. The first thing we want to do to prepare the rotor is to take a sanding disc and clean up the locating surface inside the rotor. Then flip it and do the same to the outer surface. Next, I want to take a wire brush to the hole where the centering cone is located. You want to get any rust and steel out of there. Then lastly, we want to take an air hose and blow it all out. Now we're ready to install the rotor on the lathe. The first piece we're going to install is the inside arbor adapter, followed by a spring. Then we're going to put on the centering cone. Then we're going to place the rotor. Be careful not to hit the arbor. Next is the outside adapter. followed by the dampening spacer, then other spacers as needed, and the arbor nut. The arbor nut is a left-handed thread.
Next, we're gonna install the twin cutter. Off camera, we went ahead and replaced both inserts. Now, when you install this, take care to center it over the rotor. Then tighten it securely. The next thing we're going to do is probably the most important part of the job. We're going to do what's known as the scratch test. And this will tell us whether the rotor is running true on the lathe or not. What we're going to do is carefully move one of the cutters in until it puts a little scratch on the rotor. Then we're going to rotate the rotor 180 degrees move the cutter in a little further and repeat the scratch. Now if the two scratches are in line with each other, that tells us that this rotor is indeed running true. Okay, having made our first scratch cut, off camera I went ahead and marked the rotor, and now I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. The white mark I put on top will now go to the bottom, but I'm going to keep the spacers exactly the same. Okay, so now I'm going to move the cutter in a little bit and repeat the scratch test. And if the two scratches align with each other, then we'll know that our rotor is running true and we can go ahead and start resurfacing it. Okay friends, you can clearly see that my two scratch marks are indeed aligned so we know that our rotor is running true and we can go ahead and start the resurfacing. There are two more things we need to do before we start cutting. We have to take precautions to dampen any sort of vibration that might occur. If we allow this vibration to occur, it'll result in a herringbone pattern in the finish of the rotor and it'll cause the pads to wear prematurely. So to accomplish this, you see me, I'm putting a weighted belt around the outside of the rotor. And the other thing I'm doing is adjusting the silencer pads that are on the other side of the machine. Before I start cutting, I need to obtain the discard thickness of this particular rotor. I'm now at the AutoZone website as they are an excellent source of rotor specifications. I've gone ahead and already plugged in the vehicle make and model. Then I searched the rotor. Once you found the rotor, if you scroll down, you will find all the rotor specs. In this instance, the discard thickness is 26 millimeter. That converts out to one inch 24 thousandths. Okay, I'm finally ready to start cutting. What I did off camera is I brought both of the inserts in so they just barely contact the rotor and then zeroed out the dials. Now what you see me doing is I'm bringing the cutters out so that I can cut off that little ridge that you have at the end of the rotors. Now that that ridge is gone, I'm gonna bring it in and make my first rough cut adjustment. You wanna take off at least four thousandths at a time. To take less than that would cause the rotor to get hot, and also you run the risk of causing that vibration that I talked about earlier. So now I'm gonna carefully bring each one of the cutters in 
about 4,000, so we'll be taking off 8,000s of an inch total off the rotor. We have about 75,000 to work with before we hit the minimum uh, thickness. So there I'm moving the lever to make the fast rough cut. In the interest of time, I'll pick this up when the uh, cut is finished. Uh, you don't need to sit here and watch the entire cut. Okay, so now uh, we're going to make another rough cut. It didn't quite clean up. So we're going to move it in another four thousandths, that'll be eight thousandths total, and we're going to make another rough pass. Again, I won't make you watch the entire cut. I'll uh, come back when the cut is finished. Okay, that seems to have cleaned up quite nicely. So now we're ready to make our finished cut. Now on the finish cut, I'm going to go six thousandths. The reason for that is you want to make a fairly heavy cut. The more you make the inserts work, the less likely they are to vibrate. So this finish cut is going to be a total of twelve thousandths. Again, I won't make you sit there for the entire cut. It takes about 15-20 minutes for this finish cut to finish the entire rotor. You can see how slowly the dial is moving now. Okay, this uh, rotor cleaned up very nicely. Off camera, I removed the cutting tools, the weighted band, and the silencers. And now we're going to take a quick measurement and see how well we did. Well, it looks like we have a full 50 thousandths to go before we hit the discard thickness. We removed approximately 32 thousandths of an inch. Theoretically, this uh, rotor could be turned one more time. So that's all I've got here at Rick's Garage for today. The rotor came out beautifully and it's ready to be installed on the car. So I want to thank you once again for watching Rick's Garage. Before I go, I'm going to post two videos to your left. Should you find one or the other of interest, feel free to click on them. To your right will be a picture of my trusty avatar in the form of my German Shepherd. Feel free to click on that if you wish to subscribe to my channel. So thanks again for watching, and it is my sincere hope that we will see you all again very, very soon.